I've done it. I've bought three different continuous lights as cheap as you can go in 2024 to check how far lighting gear has evolved since my first encounter with cinematic lighting. And it has been almost a decade now. Today I own a film studio, so I do have enough lighting hardware at my disposal to stop pretending that I would do better images if I had better gear. But of course, the beginnings were not that rosy. So as probably many of you, I've used whatever makeshift equipment I had at my disposal, whether it was household lamp with a dish made of aluminum foil or DIY reflectors made of styrofoam. Soon enough I realized that I needed something more professional, so I invested in some fluorescent light bulbs as there were no affordable LED lights available on the market yet. Little did I know that light bulbs sucked a big way. Despite the greenish cast and outrageous color rendering, I bravely fought with it in post production. And all things considered, it was a fun experience, and I learned a lot. To the point that aluminum foil is still my friend during photo shoots. However, over the years, the market has evolved. LED lights have become the industry standard, and even the most budget friendly continuous lighting gear is far superior to the equipment I used to struggle with. Or is it? I wondered how cheap you can go with current generation of lighting options and what kind of problems may arise with such devices. And oh boy, there are many, perhaps even more than before. Today we will try to set up a basic three-point lighting configuration with these lamps for simple portraits or talking head interviews and pray that they will hold up till the end. Let's introduce you to today's contenders. The first lamp that I wanted to test is something that was an industry standard before LEDs, and it is a red headlamp. It uses a tungsten bulb, providing perfect color rendering, and in many ways that's the only important advantage over any LEDs. You can find used red headlamps for pennies, and there are many very cheap off-brand units still in production. This one cost me around 40 bucks. They are so cheap that you might question whether they are even a functional light, and I must say that they do not disappoint. Working with these budget copies is almost comical due to the multitude of quirks they possess. It is a steel construction, but definitely it was not assembled by machine. It's crooked. I mean everything is crooked, screw holes are randomly shifted, yoke is probably bended by hand, and anything you can get your side on is a little bit off. On the positive side the cable is decent with a dimmer in the middle and hefty plug. In fact, whole device is full of interesting design decisions. For instance, let's look at the barn doors module that is blocked in place by a simple screw that will scratch the lamp's rear cap. But there is an accessory provided to address that issue. A piece of material. Problem solved. But that's just a small quirk. Inside the lamp there is a reflector dish. The red head has a winder at the back that moves the light bulb in the reflector that should change the light beam angle. The dish should be oval to accommodate the shape of the light bulb, but it was bent into a triangle to fit the mounting screws, so yeah, you can forget about proper beam angle control. Thankfully, the designer looked after that problem and made the winder mechanism so fragile that it became stuck after a few uses. No wider, no beam control, no problem. I like such a streamlined design process. It's removing the points of failure by another failure. But there are more strange construction elements as for instance there is an automatic lock for fixing the pin in the yoke in addition to standard fixing screws. I feel that this level of protection is strange for a device where the barn doors are barely attached to the lamp. Additionally, the protective grille creates a visible pattern, so I would not use it to light anything directly. Grill, of course, is needed as these lamps get extremely hot. If you never worked with such device, better prepare to buy heavy-duty construction gloves to work with that. It gets hot as an oven, and any accidental touch will result in burns. Moreover, tungsten bulbs emit a lot of heat in the infrared and lower spectrums. Sometimes it's nice, as it can make a model comfortable, other times it will literally melt someone's makeup. Despite its flaws, this lamp still 
serves as a decent source of light with moderate output and perfect color rendering. It's just a tungsten light bulb, so it should have a steady 800 watts power draw and practically almost zero output with the dimmer set to low. And nope, they butchered even such basic electrical system. This light operates in the range of 300 watts to 700 watts power draw. So let's sum it up. Pluses. It's cheap. It has bundles. You can do toast with it. You get respect from old timers in the film industry. And that's all. The second lab that I bought must have had a Bowens mount, because there are so many affordable modifiers on the market that it would be just unwise not to have such a feature. In the territory of cheap LED Bowens lamps, there are many affordable models as Yungdo, Yunglux, Yung, uh, 100. No idea how to read that. Yungdo YNLUX100. But they are still above $100 mark, and that goes into the category of lamps that are actually good overall, and we want to explore the edge cases. So I was digging deeper, and I found that there are dozens of different India and China based manufacturers producing lamps claiming things that are probably completely false. After sitting through various options with outrageous descriptions or clearly fake parameters, I settled for a company that is known for at least trying to be sincere in its claims. Undoer. I thought that maybe I would find some 60 watt lamp with a single color output and to my surprise I found a 135 watts unit for around 50 bucks. And it is a bicolor lamp. A bicolor lamp with such output must be a lie. And in fact, it is. We'll talk about it later in this video. Unfortunately, it lacks the reflector in the kit, so we will use other easily available dish. Okay, joking, it has an umbrella holder, so we'll use some dirt cheap reflective umbrella. Starting from the yoke, let's begin the roast. Umbrella holder has no fixing screws, minor defect. But please explain to me how you can design the pinhole in the yoke so small that you cannot fully mount the lamp on the stand. Maybe Andover has its own tripods with pins of a smaller size to save money and then they are compatible. No idea, but I call it a major flaw. If you need to use a drill to properly hollow out the yoke of your lamp to use it properly. Thankfully, the plastic is of the worst possible quality, so it is fairly easy to do. This lamp has a Bowens mount and it is the only visible part of the lamp that has some steel in it. Unfortunately, they did not use steel for the extremely flimsy Bowens mount lock. After filling it, I gave it a lifespan of a few dozen uses and I was wrong. It broke after literally 7 uses. Yes, 7 uses. Something gave way and blocked the pin inside the housing. Well, good for us that we won't use Bowens this time. The COP construction is also interesting, as there is one LED inside another. They are covered in a protective rubber layer that is really sticky and may lead to dirt build up over time. That's very stupid because evidently the COB module has the plastic mount for the protective glass commonly used in other lamps of such type. Overall, you can feel the low quality of the product everywhere. It has the thinniest power cord that I have ever seen and the screen behind the lamp seems broken all the time. As far as I know, it is not broken. It has only a few angles in which you can see the numbers and even then it's barely visible even though the quality of the product is low they managed to add a remote i won't roast its appearance because it just works so that's a plus at last i must check the most fishy claim about this device being 135 watts in bicolor it is bicolor all right, but it behaves strangely while going from the warm to the cold light. Its output changes throughout the cycle. Proper bicolor lamp should have a constant power draw in all cold temperatures. For instance, Aperture Lightstorm 60X maintains roughly 80 watts power draw throughout the whole temperature range. LED drivers and hardware for user interface take additional 20 watts above 60 needed by Soul LED. So so for underwear I was expecting about 150 watts power draw overall. And unfortunately it turned out that each of a single colored LED in the underwear COB is slightly below 60 watts and the steering driver is just brutally mixing the outputs, maxing out at around 120 watts in the middle of the temperature range when both LEDs are working full throttle. 
So basically this is a 60 watt bicolor lamp with a crappy driver that cannot maintain constant light output. On the other hand the cold LED looks very greenish and the warm one is evidently purple, so we can forget about the high CRI claims. Because of that it's just the best to mix them all the time and then it is a single color 120 watts unit for 50 bucks. Still not bad bang for the bag despite Underwear's misleading marketing. And for such a price we are in strange territory where construction lamps are more expensive. So in the worst case scenario you can use this lamp for for instance building new rooms in your new film studio. And it worked very well, even better than during a photoshoot. The third source of light that I needed was something that I could screw into household appliances, basically a standard E27 light bulb. And that was a surprise. An 85 watt bicolor light bulb with a remote for about 10 bucks. That's a joke if that gives a decent amount of light and has usable light quality. The light bulb is on the larger side, but there are many smaller options that will fit on most all household fixtures if needed. The construction of the light bulb is very basic, so I don't have anything bad to say about the build quality. It should be okay as long as it stays in one piece. The bulb does not have a user interface, but you can toggle between predefined presets by toggling on and off switch. More advanced way of operating is possible with a dedicated remote included in the kit. And I must say that's a decent one. It's also from the Andor company and I don't understand why they could include such a remote in the $10 light kit when the remote for the $50 Bowen lamp looked like this. Unfortunately I couldn't enjoy it for long, as it's strangely drain the batteries dry in hours, even if not in use. And some of the buttons have switched places. Having previous experience with Andor brand, I tested the lamp with a power draw meter. And unfortunately the claims about 85 watts are far-fetched. This is a 20 watt lamp with most output possible only in fully mixed mode, where it achieved roughly 40 watts power. Practically it has just a quarter of the claimed parameters. Not good at all. The only positive thing about that power is that you can actually dim it very low, which may be a nice feature for practicals in cinematic lighting. As with previous lamps you can forget about nice colors, greenish or magenta tints are evident there. Not to my surprise, the radiator on the light bulb seems unreliable and the bulb gets really hot after some time. It can potentially burn or melt some elements of the lamp fixtures, so take care while mounting it. For the simple portrait session we'll use this light bulb with IKEA chip paper lantern and a basic bulb mount. Let's keep it as cheap as possible. At the end of the day the most important thing is how is it to work with these devices. To check that I've made a small test session in my studio. Redheads went to the back as it has barn doors and warm light well fitted as a backlight. I used the cheap umbrella with the COB lamp to create a bigger source of light and positioned it as close to the model as possible. The IKEA lantern with the light bulb served to fill the shadows in the scene, although it could easily be omitted with minimal impact on the picture quality. Also if I didn't choose to use only the cheapest means I would definitely use some Bowen's mounted diffuser with additional grit and some negative feel. With better spill control in the scene the light bulb would be more useful as in the current scene light spill from the umbrella is challenging. In many ways working with these lights was a hassle. All the quirks that we covered made the whole session a minefield of sorts. Adjustments to the red headlamp required wearing gloves to avoid burns. Also I wanted to use warmer colors in LEDs but then I could see low light quality with my bare eyes. And I knew that I will have to correct it in post. Umbrella was slipping in the lamp's holder that had no means of fixing it in place. At last I was wasting time looking for a remote for the light bulb. Even though I use professional light stands, the lack of high quality modifiers made the biggest impact for me. These lamps are primarily limited by the features rather than the light output. 
To utilize good balance modifier, you must have sturdy and reliant yoke on the lamps, with additional good safeguards. The light bulb should be controlled by mobile lap and should be small enough to fit household lamps. Light intensity is not so important there. And about the redhead. Because of its overall bad characteristics, it can be only used indirectly or as a backlight, significantly limiting its applications. For me, two independent conclusions emerge. The importance of good modifiers outweighs that of the light source itself, and reliable hardware that can accommodate these modifiers is crucial. Almost always features and reliability wins over raw light source power, so it's best to invest in the hardware a bit more. Of course, the question arises, what if someone really has no budget for better lights? There are many countries where a few hundred bucks is still a lot of money and it is very hard to get while being a student or a minor. Unfortunately, I don't think I would buy such hardware even then, because I doubt that it will last. It is likely to break after only a few sessions. With non-existent warranties, these devices are better suited for construction work than for long-term use in the photo and video industry. Cheap light sources, the same as 10 years ago, don't get good marks. But what about cheap light modifiers? Why did I want it Bowen's diffuser in place of a huge umbrella? I will probably explore these topics in my next video. So see you soon on this channel.